This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. It's such great seasonings, such as the Brit's Blend, which is a mix of spices made by Mrs. Mad Canadian herself, with the right amount of heat and savory that goes in great, great meals, such as maybe chili or even a potato salad. Another great seasoning, the Sonoran Heat, one of my favorites. It goes great on wings, even burgers. It has a great Southwest seasoning to put the right kick on your food. And another one, the Two Border, one of Jared's favorite. It's a maple sugar and red pepper flake that goes great on ribs or on eggs in the morning. It's a very versatile season you can put on many, many meals. Be sure to check out all the great seasonings at themadcanadianbbq.com. That is themadcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. Can you hear the music? This is where the music goes. This is this is our chance to have a private conversation with our YouTube listeners slash watchers. Hi, YouTube. Mad Canadian lets us know he's done some restocking this weekend. Not sure what that means. All right, I'm going to have a quick sneeze, and then we can start. (coughs) (coughs) We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm okay. (laughs) Just okay. okay. I I have some... I have some allergies going on, so I apologize for any excess noise on my end. Um, getting over some bad allergy day yesterday, so. And a Benadryl that's and appa- and apparently, apparently were... kicking you in the butt right now. A little bit. I got some <laughs> caffeine here that's going to help me out, though. <laughs> apparently, apparently, Jared, apparently there was an earthquake here in North Carolina this morning. Now, this does not qualify as weather talk. As a, as technically, <laughs> no, this is weather happens in the atmosphere and earthquakes happen in the mantle. Earthquakes are not weather. I will don't, don't, don't just look at me. I will die on this hill. An earthquake is not weather. A volcano no. is not weather. Now a volcano can affect the weather, but a volcano is not weather. This is a weather top-down seismic I activity. To, I can talk about weather up. if you want. What's that? Talk about weather if you want. No, it's just I I made the declaration that this was not weather talk, and then you looked at me like, "Gee, I don't know," but <laughs> I do. Earthquake is not weather. Everybody knows that I'm I'm doing this just to get you going. Yeah, yeah, so. we know, we know, we know, we know. Okay, all right, Kyle, we actually legitimately have a lot to get to today like we have uh in our in our shared google notes where we do notes for the for the podcast we have 11 pages and this is with zero recruiting talk like i know some of you don't some of you do and some of you don't like recruiting talk um and we've doing a lot of it lately just because that's what we do during the off season we have zero recruiting talk this weekend so if i know some of you are probably happy to hear that uh we have press availabilities. We're actually going to talk about things that the coaches and the current players actually said. We're going to talk some like football, some actual football. And that's that's great. I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm excited. I'm excited at this moment. Because things can change in an instant. Right now. We're, we're focused. In yes. fact... Right now, I'm right now. excited, yes. That's all we're talking about. Yes. Uh, actually, in to, it's kind of funny the way we just did that because the first quote from Ryan Day is, 
It's great to have our guys out there. It's great to be out there with the football and seeing the guys with so much energy. Like he's he's also excited just to like actually be doing. Imagine being Ryan Day. At first, he's like us, doing recruiting all the time, worrying about the virus, worrying about this, worrying about temperature checks and all of these things that have nothing to do with football. And then all of a sudden he gets to go like out into the field, out onto the practice field with players, with footballs, doing actually, football stuff. Actually being a coach. <laughs> yeah. Not, not an administrator, not a, a doctor or a health official. No, we are being football people. Uh, and the exact quote here is, and, uh, or is that, yeah, the exact quote here being, and kind of forgetting about everything else for about an hour and a half. Just, just being a football coach. And then to, to add on top of that and how, what we were sort of going on about, Ryan Day says that they are focused on the moment because they don't know what's coming tomorrow. That's all we can do. And just... One of the things that we talked about during, by the way, this section of the show is called Deciphering Day. We haven't, we haven't had a chance to actually do a segment in a while, but this segment of the show is called Deciphering Day. And this is a recurring theme from last year uh, when we would do Deciphering Day during the season. Ryan Day, stoic as... <laughs> Ryan Day, so stoic. He's just, today, today we're doing football. That's all that matters. He says each day, quote, each day comes with new sets of challenges. But like right now, focus on the moment because they don't know what's coming tomorrow. You can't focus on anything other than being a great football team right now. Too many distractions outside of the building. All we can do right now, be a football team. All we can do right now, you and I, Kyle, record a podcast about football as if the season's going to happen because what else are we going to do? <laughs> I was trying to find a come, trying to come up with a any comeback, but yeah, yes. <laughs> All right, more from Ryan Day. Uh, he says he's not aware of uh, anybody on the team who was part of the Big Ten group of players speaking uh, on rights and demands, but he does say, "quote I believe they." All should have a voice. Now we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the show. Um, and this press conference happened before the Big Ten players, or excuse me, the Ohio State players came out and said, put out basically a group statement on Twitter. So we'll talk about that group statement a little bit more later. But uh, Ryan Day just sort of saying that he believes players should have a voice. Um, he says, if there's something that we can get done, excuse me, if there's something that I can get done on my own, then we'll, Man, I am messing this all up. If there's something there that I can't get done on my own, then we'll push for those guys to speak out. Basically saying, I'm going to do what I can for my players and anything beyond that we'll, we'll figure out and we'll speak out. And uh, Ryan Day definitely comes across as the... Uh, I feel like we used to hear, hear this term in football circles a lot more as a quote-unquote players coach. Um I think that's because most coaches are players' coaches nowadays, but um, I think a lot of what he pushes is about communication and trust and, and so on and so forth. Uh, he says that, quote, I'm comfortable with our start. Oh, man, I cannot read today, Kyle. Me to take over? You know what? Yeah. Go right ahead. <laughs> Ryan Day continues on saying that I'm comfortable with our starting training camp. Is he comfortable playing a game? Not yet, according to Ryan Day. Um, continue to iron out details and protocols as the weeks come out, though. And it's we'll get we'll get into it a little bit more, but it's it's tough to not look ahead because of how things just change in an instant well and it's also one thing that if if you're ohio state 
and you're Ryan Day and you're the Ohio State football team, you can build a culture in which your players are taking this all very seriously and they're not going out to bars and they are wearing masks and they're doing all the things that you're supposed to be doing. And it's it's easy to, I think they're they're doing a lot of their team meetings outside in tents because that's safer. That's what the data shows is that outside is safer. Okay, so we're doing a lot of our meetings outside and they're sanitizing everything and they're doing this and they're doing that and they're experimenting with face shields and they're doing all of these things that because Ohio State as a football program is, is taking all of this very seriously and you know, let's be honest, they have the resources, they have the money to take all of these steps. But then you get on a field with you know, and I'm not going to disrespect Rutgers, um, I, but they have had a lot of issues, a lot of COVID related issues. And a lot of that, I'm not going to say that they aren't taking it seriously. That's, I don't know what Rutgers is doing is with, uh, with safety protocols. I do know that New York was one of the hot spots in the country for a long time. And, you know, they're not far from New York City and maybe their challenge was just more difficult than Ohio State's challenge. I, I don't know. That being said, maybe they're all a bunch of buffoons and they're not taking seriously. I have no idea. But the point is, is that like you can do your best to create as much of a bubble as you can with the Ohio State football program, but then you get on a field with a team that isn't, is being, they're not being as successful for one reason or another as you are as far as maintaining spread. Yeah. You, you just never know what other universities are, are doing too, which is big thing of why the big 10 wanted to just do it, just a conference only try to control s some of that too. Well, and it also imagine the scramble because I forget at this point, wasn't Miami of Ohio, the first team on the schedule originally i've already forgotten i've moved on that feels like bowling green was it bowling green <laughs> is it hilarious that i have no idea point is is that it was a mac school right yeah and guess what no mac football was... yeah so yeah. ohio state could be scrambling trying to find a new game nope i already took care of this months ago we're we're just doing this we're just doing the big 10 the Big Ten can put down health guidelines. The Big Ten can move their schedule around. The Big Ten, the Big Ten. This is why we insulated the schedule just to the Big Ten. There's a lot I want to get into about the MAC and other conferences, but don't have time to get into that. Maybe maybe next week, though. But. Probably not. <laughs> All, right. Um, all right. Let's continue on here with the Ryan Day because we still got quite a few yeah, we have a lot of to topics to get to. Uh, Ryan Day says here that there's um, no concern about the quality of play will diminish early in the season. And they say they have worked all they have worked in the summer, and he's not concerned about it at all. Just mentions that they will not go into hotels for camp; they'll continue to stay in their apartments and pretty much just trust the players that they're going to do the right things. And we'll hear a little bit from the captains this year's football team and what they have to say about that too. Uh, next thing here, Justin, talking about Justin Fields. He said, By the way, I'm just real quick. Ryan I'm Day's sure, th I'm sure the beat, all the beat reporters are incredibly sad. They don't get to do their hotel pictures this year. Yes. And at least Liam yes. McCullough didn't have his snap and the long snapper didn't have his streak snapped as he has since yes. graduated. So we, we got shirtception. Everything's fine. Randy talking about Justin Fields says he he had an unbelievable off season. He's very determined right now, and you can see the look in his eye. A lot of the stuff talking I'm hearing about, surrounding Justin Fields right now uh, reminds me of sort of the things that were being said about J.K. Dobbins last season, last off season. Everyone was talking up, oh. J.K. Dobbins, everyone, everyone, J.K. Dobbins, J.K. Dobbins. And I think we're hearing a lot of that same, not just like he's the quarterback, so we're going to say some good stuff about him because he's the quarterback and that's what we have. No, like, it's just like a lot. It's just Justin Fields, uh, Justin you, Fields, you, Justin Fields. 
And you remember last year when you saw J.K. Dobbins, you kept hearing all and seeing yeah. all the things about him doing extra workouts, and you could just see the physicality of him just changing too. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, moving on here, talking about Nic- Nicholas Petit Fleury and Paris Johnson. Um, they are very talented and have been impressive. NPF had a great offseason, and he's stronger than he's ever been. He says, quote, he looks like a different person. I'm really excited to see how this uh, this offensive line is going to do this year. There's a lot of talent there. I'm, I'm really excited for the slobs this year. Yeah, a little bit further down in the Ryan Day notes here that we, we lifted from Tony Gerdeman. Thanks, Tony. Um, he's he says that this has the potential to be the best offensive line he's ever seen at Ohio State. Yes. Speaking of best offensive line, receivers. Yeah. Talking about receivers here. Uh, Brian Day talks about receivers saying anybody who deserves to play is going to play. Missing the spring hurts the freshmen, which we've mentioned yeah. a number of times before. But the good news is that they're all very talented. Then yeah. goes on and say that the next few weeks are critical. As far as pure raw talent, this might be one of the most talented wide receiver rooms in Ohio State history. Um, it'll probably be passed up by next year's Ohio, uh, Ohio State wide receiver room. Now, that being said, a lot of the talent is young. So that's why I sort of emphasize talented as opposed to best big difference but it's one of those things where you look back on it 10 years later and you say oh look at all the names in this wide receiver room you know even though some of them are freshmen and not nearing their peak yet yeah all right, moving on here talking about captains he's said that there's probably could have been about 11 or 12 captains. Thank you for not making that many captains. Uh, Leadership on this team has been great. Urban Meyer would have had 11 or 12 captains. Yeah. Um, Running backs, moving on to the running backs. Um, Master Teague and Trey Sermon Uh, says um, Master Teague has been amazing in his rehab to get where he's he's even at right now that's one of the key things that we've been wondering about and it's a shame that and have a spring practice to see where master teague is at though why they brought on trace sermon too is where is master teague with his injury too that's, yeah that is the big question that we have here we know trace sermon is very talented when he was over at oklahoma and it's a great addition to have here at Ohio State, especially with the unknown with Master Teague, but it's going to be really curious to see where he's at one in these upcoming weeks. Absolutely, uh, yeah. The wide receiver, or excuse me, the running back room. I'm I'm just overall interested to see what happens, mostly because we don't know how Ryan Day handles this type of running back room. With Urban Meyer, we would see two running backs get the vast majority of the carries in some fashion. Now, it might have been Zeke getting 90% and someone else getting 10%. It may have been Weber and J.K. Dobbins getting 50-50, but you rarely saw the third running back under Urban Meyer get carries. How does Ryan Day handle this? Could we see a three deep running back room? Uh, I mean, could, could we don't know because last year was really the only Ryan day season, you know, despite the fact that he obviously had some games year previous, but JK Dobbins was just heads and tails. So yeah, you just had JK Dobbins out there as much as you could because he was clearly the number one. What does Ryan day do when there's not a clear one or even a clear one, two? Mm-hmm. Maybe even, well, I mean, you still have other players Absolutely. like maybe McCall. McCall. Mario McCall has been one of those 
is this the season? Is this the season? Right. This is his last season here at Ohio State. Uh, Can we see him? Or even, or even Crowley. Or even Crowley. Crowley, Chambers. How, how, yeah. I'd be really curious to see after Teague and Sermon. Mayan Williams. Who's going to be that third, fourth, fourth running back there. Yeah. My, uh, yeah, I think it's in the, is it in the next quote? Yeah. Uh, Steel Chambers has had a great offseason. Mayan Williams has stepped in quickly and shown some things. It's an incredibly deep running back room. And depending upon where Teague is, as far as his recovery process and where Sermon is integrating with the team, the the running back position I, I i have no idea i mean i i do have an idea i feel like it's mostly going to be teague and sermon but i have no confidence that that's you know what i mean like if i li- i could listen back to this three months from now and say yeah i was totally wrong about that but whatever like i i don't i'm not i'm not gonna die on that hill i'll die on the earthquake hill i'm not gonna <laughs> die on this hill Defensive backs, Jared. Yeah. Defensive backs. Oh, it says seven, seven Banks and Marcus Williamson have really stepped up as leaders. Kerry Coombs. You did Kerry it Combs, again. It, you did it again. No, Kerry Combs is pushing those guys. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, no, we've been talking. Twelve years. years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we've been talking a lot about who's going to be the second or the third cornerback and Marcus Williamson gets left out of that conversation a lot. And I I don't believe, and I don't have the question that he was answering here, but I don't believe that he was prompted to bring up Marcus Williamson. You know, this is not a, Hey, how's Marcus Williamson doing? And then he just starts talking about Mark. No, I think he just chose to say Marcus Williamson's name and Seven Banks' name, which I think is telling. Sometimes, you know, you you don't... Again, this is why we call this Deciphering Day. Why those two names when there are so many defensive backs in the room? Absolutely. All right, probably one of the big topics here, Jared. Yeah. Regarding to that team up north. Yeah. Uh regarding to moving a game up in the schedule. And Day says, I don't have much of an opinion on it. Uh, they knew the schedule was going to be different. It is what it is now. Games may still get moved around during the season, which we've mentioned a number of times. Nothing's normal this year, and this won't be either. And that's okay. Well, just in whatever it takes to get it done. Yeah, um, I mean that's <laughs> we're going to talk about the schedule in some in some depth in a little in a I think in the next segment. Well, well, here they declined to answer a question <laughs> about a report. Yeah, we're he also going to talk about that about about going to quote hang a hundred end quote on Michigan. But, <laughs> so I've I've said that Ryan Day is stoic as fuck, but. <laughs> I, I think what's the other important thing here is that Ryan Day also has a mean streak. Rumor has it. I'm gonna I'm gonna under I'm gonna under rumor has it that someone at Maryland may have gotten Chase Young in trouble last year. And we saw what Ryan Day did to Maryland as a result. We know that Ryan Day, for all of his stoicism, for all of his charity, for all of his soft spokenness, also has a mean streak. And if motivated, mm-hmm. he might hang a hundred on Michigan. You know what, in a way, in a way, it's kind of good to try to get some fire in this rivalry because that's all that there is in the past few years here. I know there's been some close games and all that, but when you look at the win column here needs to be a little bit more fire coming coming from the other team seven or, games you know away maybe not yeah seven games away remember when you ride alone you ride with harbaugh 
<laughs> just just that simple. Available now in the Sloopcast T Public store. Check the master link. Last quote. Last, yes. Last quote here. Mentioned this already here, but last thing from Brian Day that we wanted to go over. He said that this has the potential to be the best best offensive line he's seen at Ohio State. Yeah. Last time I had a. Uh... Tony Gerdeman on filling in for Kyle, I, or maybe it was the time before that, we were talking about the offensive line and how ridiculous it is to lose some incredibly talented players to the NFL draft the way Ohio State did during the offseason and then maybe come back with a better offensive line. And Ohio State might be coming back with a better offensive line. And that's crazy, but it also might be true. Yes. Really, I'm really looking forward to seeing these next this week here and how this week's training camp goes and just hearing anything about football, just anything <laughs> in general. Give us some football, please. Just inject it into my veins. <laughs> I don't. I don't think this is for our YouTubers. I don't think this. You can tell how clean cut Kyle is. I don't think this is where we inject Kyle. I think it's more back here. <laughs> moving on, moving on. Big Ten schedule released um, earlier in the week. Should we do a quick ad read first? I, I feel like this, we're either going to do the ad read too early or too late, just because of where we currently are timestamp wise. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. I'm, a, I'm right, let's go ahead and do it. Yeah, right, let's do an ad read. Yeah, uh, Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, you can use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 to get 10% off your entire order. Uh, Kyle, is it 12 or 13 spices we're currently at? It doesn't matter how many spices you buy and it doesn't matter which ones you buy. It doesn't matter if you want to buy two of some and zero of another or five of some and one of another. It doesn't matter. 10% off your entire order. Uh, I'm going to list off these ones. These are the ones that are my favorite. You can, by the way, find both the promo code and the website link in the master link. You can check the show notes for the master link. You And from there, you can also link over to the Mag Canadian barbecue site. And I ha the promo code's right there in the link. And you can use... Oh, lost my train of thought. And I so real quick, I'm going to just name my favorites from the website. All right, you ready? These are the ones, this is my official list of favorite Mad Canadian barbecue spices. The Brits Blend, the Coffee and Q, the Sonoran Heat, the Cajun, the Smoke, the Savory, the Two Border, the S&P Bud, the Carry Steak, the Discord, the Ope, the Four Horsemen, the Old Fashioned, and the Mad Hatter. That's my official favorites list. See what you did there. <laughs> I actually don't like the OP that much, but that's just because I personally, as a individual, don't like dill that much. That and so that's that's just personally me. If you if you like dill, you'll probably love the OP. But that 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 one's just me. So that one, not one of my personal favorites. All the other ones, personal favorites. So you can find that and so much more at themadcanadianbbq.com. Once again, promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout. Get 10% off your entire order. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butts covered. All right, Kyle, let's talk about the schedule. All right, looking here. When I first saw this, I'm like, wow, that middle to the end, the schedule for Ohio State looked good pretty brutal but then i kind of sat back a little bit i'm like okay sparty's not good sparty's going to be bad yeah sparty's going to be maryland, very bad this year maryland is interesting i don't know unless unless the little tua turns out to be a lot better than we're all expecting i'm not expecting much from maryland this year then penn state it's going to be at penn state but no whiteout. I, I, or potentially a very muted whiteout. I, current Pennsylvania law says no attendance. That could change. That also might not change, but it doesn't matter. Home games, as far as crowd noise, 
It's just not going to be a thing this year because even if there are people in the stadiums, it's going to be 20% capacity. Max. And I feel like that's being optimistic. So even if there are 20,000 fans in Beaver Stadium and they're all wearing white, it's not a whiteout. Even if, you know, they can all wear white and they can all scream until they're hoarse, but maybe maybe if they did a on the field camera view where you see a lot of white in that first few rows but that would kind of defeat the purpose if they're all gathered in one area all right here let's run the, let's run down the schedule here of oh, Sean Raleigh couldn't it. So join us today thinking... because he's at work okay first game at Illinois and then home to Rutgers Way to open the season up. Good way to ease ease the way. Dip your toes in the water. Got to dip your toes in. The Illinois game should be noted on a Thursday. And then, well, first things have changed. Though at first, we forgive you, Purdue. At Purdue, yeah, obviously, scars. The the part that scars. There's some scars there going back yeah. to Purdue. Going back to Purdue, but but not their best player though. Yeah, Rondell Moore has opted out of the season, and you know we are already talking about Penn State. I would say their best player has opted out of the season. Uh, Ohio State is not currently. I'm going to say that I'm going to stress currently, uh, not currently playing Minnesota. They're Arguably, their best player has also opted out of the season. Mm-hmm. And moving on, week four, they play host to Indiana. They have a week by for their fifth week. Then they have the stretch of home to Nebraska, at Penn, at Michigan State, home to Michigan, at Maryland. Penn State. Week off for week 11. Then they host Iowa. So how about that? They play Ohio State's, you want to call it their Achilles heel, gets to play Purdue and Iowa this year. Yeah, I mean, you can call it an Achilles heel or you can call it a revenge tour? Oh, no, Jared. (laughs) No. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah don't don't have to go on the road to iowa the way you have to go on the road to purdue so i don't know if that one mm-hmm. counts or not but yeah it's i mean i want to want to talk about the schedule i think the schedule matters but i also feel like the schedule is flexible like Just because this is the schedule right now does not mean this will be the schedule that they end up actually playing. It should be noted also that there's just an open week at the end of the schedule and then the conference championship game. There's just an entire... Sorry, you broke up, Kyle. They even mentioned, too, too, that they can move back conference championship too i even think like i can't read the text there but i think that's like the first week in december the sec there's is in the middle of december so there's there's no reason if you need to move it back there's no reason that they couldn't move the conference championship back a week or even two weeks yeah i think the playoff committee came out and I want to say, and I'm pulling this number out of my memory, which is questionable at best, my memory. The conference or the the playoff committee, I think, has moved their final, I think December 20th is when they're releasing their final poll, something in that area, which I think is a full three weeks after the current Big Ten championship game. It's a weird season, everyone. It's going to be a really weird season. Um, I'll take it. 
if 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 everything plays out the way everyone's currently planning for it, the, I'll take it. But if you want any indication I, that like the lower bowls aren't happening this year, the playoff committee isn't even doing their like like only the the red box bowl I think officially has canceled their bowl for this year. But basically, if you aren't a playoff game or like one of the big six. They're, they're, they're not going to happen. I don't think, I don't, I don't know, I don't think any of the bowl games outside of like the big six bowl games are actually going to happen this year. And that's assuming that the big six actually happened this year, which is not a given. I don't care how weird, how oddly this season will be, just as long as there is a season. Hey, if Ohio State can... If, if Ohio State can get to the playoff and win a natty, I don't care. I, what was really upsetting, like, we always feel like Ohio State can win a national title. Of course we do. That's the expectation. But this team this year, man, this team this year is so, so much potential. And I just, I, it's it's rare when you so, can say you have one of the best two quarterbacks in college football and say it with a lot of confidence and that's what it's about is back to the schedule here a lot of talks regarding to week eight there against the team up north a lot of talks about hey since this is an odd year it's, it's unusual let's just make it a night game why not why not why not it's in Oct- one of, but, one of the big reasons why the Big Ten is always like, well, don't want to do night games in November, or you don't want to do this as a night game or that. It has to do with fans. Fans getting too drunk. Fans in stadiums that are too cold. Fans having to travel home in bad weather. All of it has to do with the fans. Play, play it all at night. Now, they're not going to. Just... The Michigan game will be played. One, cons- One consistency, though, Jerry. Yeah. That game? Mm-hmm. You know it. Ohio State wins. The Gus Johnson special. <laughs> Gus Johnson special. Uh, I'll some say, sort of consistency. I, I don't I don't know. I'm not a baseball person. I don't watch baseball. I know they're having as much issues as everyone else. But I saw someone on Twitter say that the Ohio State-Michigan game could in theory be played right before the world series, which is also on Fox. So you could basically go right from mm-hmm. Ohio state, Michigan into the world series. And if that is the case, the world series will absolutely be played at night, which means that Ohio state, Michigan will be played. Uh, yeah, it's Fox, which is going to carry with Gus John, if they're doing their flagship games at noon, dog barks. This is what Ohio, or this is what Fox is doing. They want to put their premier games at noon. They're just conceding. Okay, ESPN and ABC are going to put their best stuff at eight. We're going to own the noon time slot. That's their strategy right now. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. I don't care. Point is, is that if Ohio State's playing a big game and it's going to be on Fox, it's probably going to be at noon. Anything else you want to talk about with the schedule? Yeah. Um, I just want to maybe take a look at some of the other spots on the schedule and just say if, if we're looking around Ohio State, not from the other division. First off, I'm, are we surprised they kept divisions before I get into the rest of it? If this schedule okay. is about flexibility, okay. we're willing to not have Ohio State, Michigan at the end of the year. We're willing to do this and we're willing to do that. And we're willing to just throw away so much stuff in order to create this new flexible schedule. This is why did we do this and why do the well, because of flexibility. It's all about flexibility. That that's That's the word, right? Staying fluid, staying flexible. Okay? If if fluid and flexible is what we are going for here, why keep the restrictions of the divisions? 
Why say Ohio State absolutely must play Rutgers? Why? <laughs> Why must Ohio State absolutely play Maryland this year? Mm-hmm. Why? It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I mean, the, I, I'm not. I'm I'm anti division anyway, so it's really easy for me to stand on this soapbox. I would love them to just throw out the divisions. I I don't. Yeah. I don't, for football, again, maybe because of regional stuff, it's good to have the divisions for the non-revenue sports. But from a, from a football perspective, I don't, we don't need the divisions. Not now, especially not now, but not ever. I don't, I don't see the goal, but yeah, uh, just sort of looking at the cross divisional games. Ohio State gets Illinois, Purdue, Nebraska, and Iowa, which Toughest automatically, one. which automatically makes Minnesota, Northwestern, <laughs> Wisconsin, the favorites in the West, right? Looking here, looking here, the toughest one that I see is probably Indiana. Who, yeah, I said who they play. Never mind. I messed up. Indiana, I think has, and I think Indiana has the toughest one. They play, in state, Ohio State, Michigan, and they play Wisconsin this year and Mar and Maryland too. Not Maryland. I'm sorry, Minnesota. They're 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 across. They play Wisconsin and Minnesota in the same year. It'll be, it might be a rough year for Indiana. Yeah. Um... Nebraska does have to play Ohio State. Does have to play Penn State. Doesn't have to play Michigan. This is how I decide, by the way, to... Everyone want to take a peek behind the curtain? Who's going to win the West this year? Well, probably Wisconsin. But beyond that, look at the schedule. Like, Mm -hmm. who are you and who are you not playing from the other division? Wisconsin does have to play Michigan this year. I, I don't have a lot of confidence that Michigan's going to be even by Michigan standards, good this year, but they avoid both Penn State and Ohio State. And same thing with Minnesota. They play Michigan as well, but don't play Ohio State or Penn State. Now, that's going to be interesting week two there. Minnesota hosts Michigan. Yeah. There was all this talk about Minnesota and how good how good in terms of Minnesota standards, how good they are. How well are they going to be this year? Like I said, they lost one of, if not their best player, uh, his name's floating my head from the second, but the wide receiver who's incredibly good. Um, they, they've lost him. He's, he's opting out of the season. I've not heard anything from Wisconsin as far as season opt outs. They've obviously lost Jonathan Taylor, who was their best player from last year. But yeah, you automatically, I think even without looking at the schedule, you probably went into this thinking Minnesota, Wisconsin are your two best teams from the West this year. With Rondell Moore leaving, that makes that even more obvious. Not that I think Purdue was deep enough that it mattered. But then you look at their schedules and... Both of them are avoiding Ohio State. Both of them are avoiding Penn State. The the Big Ten East, which I think in years past we sort of championed as one of the best divisions in college football. Uh, Probably not this year. Uh, Michigan's going to be a bit down. Penn State... We'll see. I don't think they're going to be as good as Penn State was last year. Michigan State has full-blown collapsed. Rutgers will be good in a couple years. I think Maryland will be... Yes, I said it. I think Rutgers will be good in a couple years. I think Maryland will be good in a couple years. Indiana is become one of those teams which, compared to a a few years ago, especially like pre-Kevin Wilson... You know, they went from a laughing stock to a team that might go 500 or might win eight games. You know what I mean? Like, which compared to where Indiana was a few years back is 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 pretty good. So they're they went from sort of a laughing stock to like a respectable middle tier 
team in the Big Ten. I really don't know what to expect from Indiana this year. I've not really looked into them yet. But, yeah, um, I don't think this schedule is particularly difficult for Ohio State compared to seasons past. Not having to play Oregon is obviously huge. I mean, the big the big one is at Purdue. Under normal circumstances, that, that would probably be a night game and – we give Haas a little bit of struggle. In years past, it, it has. I feel like because of what happened the last time Ohio State played Purdue, Ohio State's going to show up to that game super ready. We hope. We hope. Do, do, right, do, do, let's do, move do on, you Jared. see a. Real quick, though, one last question in regards to the schedule. Do you see a potential? Do, is. Last year we circled a couple games. I think the Northwestern game was a game we circled. We did circle the Purdue game as a potential game the year before last. We did. We, we predicted that if one. Gonna, if we're going to circle one, yeah. I'm going to say at Maryland between Michigan and the Penn State games. Yeah, and I think a lot of that just depends upon how's what what does little Tua look like, and by then we should know. But yeah, I think that's that's mm -hmm. you're at Maryland, as you said, between Michigan and Penn State, isn't it weird? We never had to worry about a game after Michigan too, never. unless it, it was a conference championship game. Yeah, so that's weird. Who knows? Yeah. I think it's I think it's uh, I think it's interesting. We'll, we'll see. Interesting to see how well the captains for house state football team will get this team on the right track and keep them motivated. And those captains are Jared transition game. 100 Justin Fields, Josh Myers, tough Borland, Justin Hilliard, Sean Wade, Wyatt Davis, and Jonathan Cooper. Yeah. Let's, uh, they had Have some we... press availability. Do you, do you want to, since I'm incapable of reading today, apparently, do you want to sort of roll us through some interesting quotes, some interesting uh, yeah. notes? Sure. Tough Borland. We'll start with Tough Borland, everybody's favorite linebacker, right? I I I know you right? said that sarcastically, <laughs> but I was just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's do this. Uh, Tough Borland. Uh, he. But it's saying it's very humbling. Um, I'm honored to be with a guy like JT Barrett, who was an unbelievable leader here. It's a huge responsibility that comes with this. All eyes are on you every day. You have to attack every day with the same demeanor and continue to work and do what's gotten you to this point. Yeah, and, and what he's talking about there is the fact that he has joined JT Barrett as the only three-time captain in program history. Um, and isn't it ironic, <laughs> don't you think yes. that, and I, and I'm stealing this observation. I forget if it was from Tony or Tom, I, but it was definitely one of them pointed it out on the Buckeye weekly that it's tough Borland and JT Barrett, two of the more controversial figures in Ohio state football, uh, the past say 10 years, as far as some people being just loving them or hating them. I guess that's what yeah. controversial maids. The <laughs> and they're both three time captains. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'll just leave it at that, huh? Just gonna right, leave Sean it. Sean Wade. Yep. Sean Wade. Uh, everybody in the cornerback room has been impressive. It's gonna be a special year. Secondary is, quote, is so deep year this year. It's incredible. It says they can rotate and have no fall off. We'll see. I, <laughs> I, I don't know about that last part. But we'll see. We'll see. There is definitely a lot of talent there, but it's just unproven. It's It, it really is just unproven here. And I feel a lot more confident with Combs yeah. back, in the, back in the coaching staff here. So I do have a lot more confidence in that, but we shall see. Quick note, he also name checks Marcus Williamson. Just, I, I think, 
we we now have two Marcus Williamson name checks. And I think that's noteworthy. Justin Hilliard um, said he is really confident there will be a season. Uh, said they can't control what's going on outside, but they do have control of what goes on inside the team. They control they control this virus on the team. Uh, talking about how putting everybody just on check here, saying, hey, you guys have to take care of yourselves. If you don't take care of yourselves, you're going to hurt the team, you're going to hurt the coaches, you're going to hurt the season in general. So really putting it out there, saying that everybody has a responsibility here. Yeah, I mean, do you want to be the guy who... <laughs> I especially, like, think about what, like, Justin Hilliard is, has gone through. He's is now his sixth year at Ohio State, and this isn't like a JT Barrett joke. This actually is his sixth year at Ohio State. All of the injuries he's fought through, all of the crap he's fought through, think about every, and then, like, you want to cost him his senior season because you wanted to go get some wings or you wanted to not wear a mask to try and prove some point. Is that really mm. what you want? Do you want, do you want to cost Justin Hilliard with everything he's been through his senior season? What if, if he performs, let's not forget this guy's a former five star, maybe a high four star recruit. He, mm. this could be the difference between joining the regular workforce with the rest of us or at least getting a shot at the NFL that could that's the difference this season could make for Justin Hilliard this year this season could be worth hundreds of thousands if not more dollars to him and you want to you want to no, cost absolutely. him that opportunity by being irresponsible by not washing your hands by not wearing a mask mm -hmm. do you want to be that guy Moving on to the next person, Jonathan <laughs> Cooper says it's been a challenge uh, avoiding the student body with in-person classes. Uh, it goes on to exactly like what we were just talking about. Players need to take it upon themselves to be safe and be smart with who they're around. Um, another thing he talks about is a Michigan game B moved. He said it doesn't matter just as long as we get to play them. I think we're all in agreements with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It it's just, again, this is a weird season. I don't need to say it again. Let's just, let's get, we Justin, can get. Feel, Justin feels, let's keep moving on here. Justin feels there's a lot here. I'm just going to point a couple of things out here. Uh, he says here, he's glad to see different athletes coming together, such as the PAC 12 is doing. Has been some talk about the big 10, about what's going on. It says, quote, I wouldn't say it's serious right now. He doesn't want it to be blown out of proportion by the media. And if you're on Twitter nowadays, you, you're going to, you're seeing a lot of just stuff regarding to about media in general. Yeah. And it's, yeah. When the Ohio state football players came out with their statement, which I don't think we're going to have time to get to today, yeah. but when they came out with their statement, it was basically like, we want to play and we trust that the coaching staff is taking care of us. And that just didn't fit the story that a lot of the people wanted to tell. And I think when you're talking about, I'm all for players' rights. I think they should be organizing in some capacity. They should be making their voices heard. We've seen a lot of that this off season and I'm for it. That being said, we're fighting for these players to have a voice and that shouldn't be limited to when that voice is saying a thing you want it to say. So if the Ohio state players are coming out and saying, we want a season, we under, we understand the risks. We want, we trust our coaching staff is doing the best that they possibly can do. Well, then that's their voice and how they're using it. And for people mm -hmm. to immediately come out and criticize it, is say it with me now hypocritical and i'm not criticizing big 10 united i'm not criticizing the pac-12 players if they feel like their institutions aren't doing a good job 
then they should absolutely do what they are doing. But if Ohio State players come out and say, our institution is doing what is needed, then that should not then be an opportunity to criticize Ohio State. That should be an opportunity to praise Ohio State. You look at every single player, especially from the uh, captains here, pretty much every single one is saying that they feel that the faculty and the staff are doing a great job with protocols and safety. Um, it's the, it's it's a recurring thing. You can, I mean, we could, every time one of these players say it, we could repeat it, but they talk about how transparent the coaching staff is being, how open the communication is being, how much they trust them, the lengths they're going to. It's a recurring this theme. Isn't just a, this isn't just a football thing too. Like when it was Ohio State athlete, it wasn't just Ohio State football came out with the announcement. It was, it was the athletes from Ohio State University. It wasn't just a football thing. It's the university as a whole. Yeah. Which says a lot. So it's not just just the football program that's getting the extra love, the extra attention. We're see, we're hearing and seeing it from other uh, other sports as well, which is great to hear from a right. university standpoint. All right, moving on here cuz we are coming up about an hour here, Jared. Yeah, we need, <laughs> uh, we, need to, Josh we need to start hitting that hour mark again a little bit better. Josh Myers uh, says he doesn't think they can go, they can put a wrong person in at left guard or right tackle because everybody is looking good. Going back to what we said about this being a really talented offensive line. White White Davis says his parents want his season to happen. And we see recurring with other players too on social media too. Um, goes on to say they just want to make sure it's a safe environment. They feel good about how Ohio State is handling everything. Get tested twice a week and masks are required in the facilities. And he also goes on to say it doesn't matter when they play Ohio or play Michigan. It's the first game of the schedule. So be it. We're going to beat the brakes off them. Yeah, between the thing that may or may not have been said by by Ryan Day as far as hanging a hundred on, on Michigan. Uh, and then this thing that was absolutely said by a couple of the players about beating the Bra- It's It's very un Ohio state. Like Ohio state has been more of the uh, Teddy Roosevelt of, of the Ohio state, Michigan rivalry. There seems to be a lot of saber rattling come from Michigan that turns out to be nothing. And then a lot of Ohio State just sort of showing up and speaking with the stick, <laughs> carrying a big stick and and not talking about it, at least not until after the game. So it was a little bit weird to, to hear a couple of Ohio State players talk very openly about beating the brakes off of Michigan. And Ryan yeah. Day... Now it's disputed about when Ryan Day said this, but and sort of transition into our next topic. Well, I guess we'll just touch on very quickly as we do need to end this podcast soon. Basically, Jim Harbaugh accused Ryan Day of having players and coaches together before they were allowed. And Ryan Day responded to something along the lines of, Hey Jim, why don't you worry about your own program? And then allegedly, I'm going to say allegedly something else was said. And uh, I know that the Buckeye scoops Nevada buck uh, has one version of this story. And I saw Dave Biddle over at 24 seven, have a different version of this story, but allegedly at some point, and when he said it is, is what is disputed that, Ryan Day suggested that he was going to hang a hundred on Michigan this year, which is a thing we talked about earlier and Ryan Day and his mean streak and how I believe him. Mm-hmm. I fire in, the, in that rivalry. I mean, why not? Let's do it. Let's play. Yeah, let's they, they, just they, play the game 10 times. They kept- he kept talking about, oh, Harbo is going to renew this rivalry. It's going to be another 10 year war. And mm-hmm. no, it's more like the Cold War. Nothing's happening. It's more like Groundhog's <laughs> Day. <laughs> yes. Wink, wink, nod, nod. That. 
Wink, wink, nod, nod. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, you want to get into any of these other things we have here, Jared? Um, it really important to note that CJ Saunders, uh, his request for a sixth year of eligibility was denied. So, yeah, I think Coach that Day does plan to have, Coach Coach Day does plan to have CJ join the coaching staff in some capacity. My guess, since he did just graduate from Ohio State this last weekend, yeah, maybe as a graduate assistant. Then. Yeah, and and I think that makes a lot of sense. CJ Saunders, his ability to contribute to the football team would have been more in a leadership capacity than it necessarily would have been on the field anyway. Um, we all wanted this for CJ Saunders. He's not a guy who was going to be an NFL player. Um, but again, if you're talking about all of the things Justin Hilliard did to get his way back on the field, it's, you know, d- copy and paste all of that for CJ Saunders as well. And we all wanted it for CJ Saunders and it sucks that he's not going to get it, but I think it's pretty telling of who CJ Saunders is that Ryan Day is just like, well, I'm going to get him a graduate assistant job. It's probably better for CJ Saunders anyway. Again, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, it's better not to get drafted than to get drafted in the seventh round, but still everyone wants to get drafted in the seventh round. Of course, CJ Saunders wanted to play. Of course he wanted to play another year of football. Of course. That being said, it's one of those things that you look back on five years from now and and say, well, I actually got to get paid. I started my coaching career. I did this. I did that. And it, maybe it actually turns out to be long-term better for CJ Saunders that he gets to be a graduate assistant this year. All right, Kyle, let's lightning round our Ask Sloopcast questions and then let's end the show. Real quick here. All right. Uh, Duncan from the Discord. Was there anything more fun at SeaWorld as a kid than the Splash Zone? No, undefeated. As far as things you can do at SeaWorld, if that's if that's, that's, if that's the scope, no. Uh, uh, splash, the Splash Zone at SeaWorld undefeated. Yes. All right. A question from Duncan from the Discord. Controversy. Have to move. Free seat. Sea World controversy noted. All right, go ahead. Yes. Um, have you have to move one game or swap opponents, uh, such as like Rutgers gets everyone sick at once, blah blah, blah and Sunday we're playing Iowa instead. On a minimum notice, excluding Penn State and the team up north, what week on the schedule would you least want to see messed up? So looking here, um, as far as Michigan goes, is besides long, Michigan and Penn State, I know, but even then, I don't care if they move it. Like it doesn't matter. It might get moved. I hope. I, I mean, I, I hope they move it. I don't care. As long as they, as I long mean, as Ohio State and Michigan get to play this year, it's fine. To me, to, to me. I don't really care I, if there's going to be games played, move them however you want. If they're moved constantly every week, whatever. Just tell me, just tell me that Wednesday night when we record or yeah. it's going to happen or yeah. who we're playing just so we can do it. Um, but he asked if we had one, you know, I'm just going to say the first one. Let's, I want to keep the first one there. I tell you first, what, first week. It, yeah, because that would be weird to have to do that on short notice. Um, one of the things I would be concerned about is if Wisconsin or Minnesota got moved onto the schedule, mm-hmm. as those are some legitimate opponents. So you'd like to see that not happen. Um, I absolutely want to play Iowa and Purdue this year, not because of competition reasons as much as it is like, yeah, let's get those monkeys off of our back. Um, Austin asks us, give me a synopsis of 2020 season with the Ohio State in the Big 12. How would they do against each opponent? Uh, they would beat everybody handily. The Oklahoma game would be fun to watch. The Oklahoma really game, game would be, yeah, Oklahoma game would be fun and they would just beat everyone else. Like Oklahoma in the Big 12 is Ohio State. Okay. 
Texas. Now, that being said, Texas is Michigan. But I don't even think they're that good. I think they're actually lesser than Michigan as far as how good they've been the past few years. Um. I mean, but here's the thing. They don't even have, like, do they even have a Penn State? Who's their third? I mean, TCU is sometimes good, sometimes not. And then there's been some controversies at TCU this week. Um, I mean, it would be easier. The Big 12 is lesser. And, I mean, you want to you wanna get Justin Field? You'll tell you what, you want a synopsis? That's what he asks for, right? Justin Fields wins the Heisman. That's your synopsis of of Justin Fields of Ohio State playing in the Big 12. It's yes. New York City, maybe New York City, maybe they have to do it virtually this year, I don't know. But it's Justin Fields holding up the Heisman. That's your synopsis mm-hmm. of no matter what else happens, it's Justin Fields holding the Heisman. That's your synopsis of Ohio State in the Big 12. By the way, that was a weird Twitter thing that was going around, when was that, on Friday or Saturday, that was a completely false rumor about several several of the higher tier big 10 schools going to the big 12 for like this year only. Trolls are going to be trolls. I'll just yeah. leave it there. Trolls will be trolls. Um, two, two last questions from sun card. What are some positive things you've learned or gained from 2020? Uh, I can be just as effective at home <laughs> as I was at work. <laughs> I already knew that, but it's been really nice to prove it to people who actually have the power to make those choices for me. Yes. Last um, question, or do you have uh, one? Do you have one positive thing I've learned about? I tell you what, it's been mostly. I it's been negative. It's honestly been like a lot of my worst fears about our society proved. <laughs> like a lot of the negative things I felt about where we are as far as a country and as far as our our ability to have discourse and our ability to think about things rationally or to think about things scientifically, a lot of my worst fears are being confirmed. That's where I'm at as far as 2020 goes. Let's show, let's show Jared some love here. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. Well, here you go, Jared. How do you, how do you get over a hangover? What's, what's your hangover remedy? If you have to, V8. But... Hangovers are about hydration. That that's it. If you have a hangover, your biggest issue is that you're dehydrated. If you have a hangover, you done messed up already. Don't try to fix the hangover. Prevent the hangover. And if you've done any sort of athletics, even just at the high school level, you it is insanely difficult to rehydrate. It is much easier to prehydrate. You have to go into your, either your athleticism or your drinking, whichever may be the case. You have to start hydrated. Mm. It's much easier to stay out of debt than it is to get out of debt. It's the same thing. V8 is your go-to, but don't, you have to pre-game with water before you pre-game with alcohol before you get drunk. My my go to when I have a hangover, it's been a while, but <laughs> when I did have a hangover, it really was just eating. For me, it's just eating, whether it's just not eating fatty food, just eating in general. Let's get uh, something, uh, it's like get a good, can't even think, <laughs> like a, something good and salty, maybe. Yes. To me, was something good. Well, that, that's one of the reasons why the V8 specifically is good. Not just for the vitamins, which are helpful, not just for the liquid, which is helpful, but because it's also very salty. And like, I don't know how many people actually know this. Like when Gatorade is like electrolytes, 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 they're they're talking mostly about salt. There's potassium too. That's fine. So but like Gatorade has been bragging about electrolyte for decades. It's salt. Gatorade is Kool-Aid plus salt that's all it is do you guys know this gatorade is is just kool-aid with salt in it and then they call the salt electrolytes mm-hmm. and it's potassium too so eat a banana eat a banana yes, banana yes eat a banana <laughs> 
put some salt in your Kool-Aid, and boom, Gatorade. Congratulations, I just saved you some money. Great, and I think that's the show, Jerry. <laughs> salt your bananas. Salt a banana and drink some water. All right, Kyle, that's it for today's show. Um, we're still running over, but that's fine. We'll fix it in post. No, we won't. The videos, by the way, if you guys don't know this already, the YouTube video just gets uploaded. So if you want to see how much we actually suck at doing this, like pre-edit, watch the YouTube video because it goes up with no edits. It's it's just what it is. I hate to break it to you. No, I don't hate to break it. I don't hate, I don't hate anything. Everything's fine. Everything's fine, you guys. But yeah, that's the end of today's show. You can get this shirt in our T Public store. Um, if you don't, it, if you if you can't read it, it when when you ride alone, you ride with Harbaugh, and that's an angry looking Harbaugh right there. Um, it's it's World War II propaganda, and that's um, it's just what it's based off of, and that that should be Hitler, if if you if you're not getting the joke. So it's just Harbaugh is Hitler, because why not, right? Hate week. But it's from our Hate Week collection last year. Uh, we'll be doing game posters and everything this year too, so look forward for that. But you can see all of our all of our posters, all of our T-shirts from last year in the T Public store. We've released uh, some brand new T-shirts in the T Public store for this year already. Uh, I've been on a Nintendo kick, so if you like Nintendo stuff, uh, there's a Zelda shirt, there's a Mario shirt, there's a uh, Goldeneye shirt, which I know Brawley bought. He sent us a picture of that. Oh, it's pretty cool. I like that one. Yeah, the gold. I like the Goldeneye shirt. Um, I think the Zelda shirt's really nice. I, I think all the Nintendo ones are really nice, honestly. Um, and then, yeah, so we, we released a bunch of new T-shirts. There's a few uh, Nintendo ones, a few music ones, a few random ones that are just sort of generally like Yay Ohio. So if you want to check out some Yay Ohio stuff, you can check that out. Uh, link to that store is in the master link, which is in the show notes. Um, if you like just Ohio-based stuff, I'm also just, just as a side project, some non-Sloopcast stuff. If you want to support, uh, at, if you want to support the Sloopcast, but don't necessarily want like Sloopcast stuff, I have another T Public store called 7071. That link is also in, in the master link. Click on the master link. It's got all the stuff, including Mad Canadian, our Patreon store, not our Patreon store, just our, our Patreon, uh, where you can just support us financially. But if you don't want to just give us money, you know, go buy some t-shirts. That's also incredibly helpful. But uh, mm -hmm. that and a bunch of other stuff is is in the master link, which is in the show notes. And one of the dogs just knocked something over in the other room. So that's a thing that happened. Um, that's that's all the plugging I feel like doing. Just check out the master link. All the stuff's in there. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, two quick things. Um, Ohio high school football schedule has changed from 10 to 6 games this year. And really weird thing I kept seeing it was about the postseason for, for high school football is eligible for every team. After the six weeks, which was... I don't know why they decided that, but I, I have a feeling that's just going to change or even just go away in general. Just my things I keep hearing. I'm not well. What does eligible in that context mean? Like, are there? I don't know about. I, I my my high school was not a uh, at least while I was there a, a playoff caliber <laughs> a playoff caliber. I don't know how the playoff stuff works, uh, but. What, what does eligible mean? That doesn't, obviously that does not mean that there's going to be a playoff with every single Ohio high school football team in it. Well, you're, you're there. You're I your assume own. that there are rules in place about you have to meet some sort of minimum something or other. It's sort of like to be bowl eligible, you have to be at least 500. Well, in high school, you're, you're into different divisions and then you're graded from a point system. Like yeah. you get points for winning and all that too and usually it's like the top three four teams in your division out of like 16 usually goes on to the playoffs then and then you get like there but because of other um conferences and even cities they just not 
having football in general, it kind of opens it up a little bit more. It's like, oh, instead of four, maybe we're going to open up a lot more teams. And so I think I think people are getting hint that even the worst teams are eligible, would be eligible, or be in the playoffs. Yeah, I might have misread that, but that's how I took it. But yeah, I, that, well, that's the thing. Like, I'm just I'm not a hundred percent sure what like basketball, in, like basketball, what in context of what well all the teams are eligible i just assumed and i don't know i just assumed that there was some sort of like basement maybe point total or i just i whatever rules that were in i just interpret that as to say whatever rules were in place for determining playoff opponents Mm -hmm. are going to be flexible this year like this, this win over this division team is still going to count for the same number of points, but I just assume there's going to be a lot more flexibility. That's, that's, that's all I took it as mm-hmm. fluidity and flexibility. That's the last thing I have here, Jared, the crew coming to play in Columbus, August 20th against Chicago. Oh, I can't wait to go. Mm, oh. Maybe. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. I went. I think yep, I've gone to I my got. last game at Map Free, but I didn't know it was my last game at Map Free, which is. Yeah. I was gonna say it's sad, but the stadium you, kind of sucks. To go. So it's fine. She got to go. <laughs> I paid for a That's bunch of I tickets I didn't use, so don't make it sound like it was a good thing. All right. That's all I got, Jared. All right. All right, uh, tonight's ending music will be by the band Mr. Moon. You can uh, check out what the name of the song is in the show notes. Um, I know the show notes last week were a mess. I just had some personal stuff I had to take care of. So uh, the podcast just sort of dropped last week is what happened. That was the least edited podcast of all time, of of Sloopcast all time, that is. so the show notes were a mess, and if the the podcast editing was a mess, that that's why. I just ran out of time because I had a minor dog emergency. Uh, so we'll do better this week, because uh, I, I know I said some stuff was going to be down in the show notes last week that was not. So apologies for that. This week will be better. And with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer Listen to local music and, of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Mr. Moon. Once again, this is where the music goes. Your, your video didn't freeze. I know I was just sort of staring off into nothing there for a second. But once again, this is just you and me time now, YouTube. You don't get you don't get music. Like the podcast listeners, they don't get this. This is just you and me now, YouTube. I don't know what I'm doing right now either. It was weird, and I apologize, (laughs) whatever that was. All right, this is the part where I thank the band and then do another ad read. Kyle, you want to do this ad read, or should I do this ad read? See, YouTubers get this sort of backstage stuff. I think Kyle gave me the go-ahead. I think Kyle gave me the go-ahead. This is me now scrolling back up to the top of the show where we have the show notes for the advertiser. See, YouTube, you get all of this stuff. It's great, right? Be sure to follow me. My my Twitter has changed. Oh, that's right. I forgot to ask you about that. Well, I'll get you, though. Once again, would like to thank Mr. Moon for ending the podcast. And then I have to do do a Mad Canadian read, but I, I need to fix a wrong Kyle, what's your new Twitter handle? It's at Sloopcast Kyle. You want to spell that? <laughs> no. Sloopcast Kyle. Okay. Sloopcast Kyle with a K. There you go. In case you were confused and thought maybe it was spelled with a C, it's Sloopcast Kyle, Kyle with a K. Who, by the way, in case there's any confusion, is not Kyle Lamb. Just throwing that out there. All right. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is is who we're supposed to be doing an ad read for right now. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is uh, basically, I'm the type of person who 
didn't used to like to buy spice blends because if you buy it from like, you know, McCormick and, and some of those other people, it's just, it's a lot of time it's filled with a bunch of junk and a bunch of preservatives and a bunch of, you, you read the ingredients and you, you can't read the ingredients without some sort of chemistry degree. But you look at the, you look at the ingredients list on, on these and this is the, I picked the coffee and cue by, by just random, uh, chili powder, maple sugar, paprika, ground coffee, additional spices. He's not going to, he's not going to tell you all of them. He's, he's got to, you got to protect the brand. But the point is, is that it's not filled with a bunch of garbage. And that's one of the reasons why I sort of just started buying my paprika separate and my this separate and my that. And then I just sort of add stuff as I go. And I, you know, it was a pain in the butt, but I got a better product out of it. So I did it. Well, now that I have the mad Canadian on my side, I've, I've kind of gone back to using spice blends. And when I'm using spice blends, this is not, it's 90% of the time it's from the mad Canadian. Uh, I, I do have one other place I like to buy spices from, but 90% of the time it is the mad Canadian. I just picked up the Cajun. Let's look at the Cajun cumin, coriander, Spanish paprika. See, it's a different paprika. He knows what he's doing. He's picking his paprikas. Do you have two separate paprikas at home? You do now mad Canadian kosher salt, black pepper, and Kyle additional spices. Point is, is that it's not mass produce factory McCormick crap is what I'm trying to tell you. This is bottled in Ohio by an Ohioan who calls himself a Canadian. I still haven't quite figured that out. Point, <laughs> point is, is that it's not mass process crap that you need a chemistry degree to understand what's in it. And that's why I continue to buy. I, I mean, I continue to buy it just because of that. I, I would maybe use it sometimes just so I, if I didn't like it, I would maybe just buy it sometimes or, and use it every once in a while, just so I know what I was talking about for the show. I would do that. I, but I just buy, even if Mad Canadian was like, Hey, I can't advertise on the show anymore. I'd still keep buying his stuff. That's how much I like it. You can buy it for yourself. Mad Canadian BBQ.com promo code sloopcast10. He has my butt covered. He has your butt covered. He probably has his own butt covered because he's that talented. Point is, is that he has your butt covered. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. I Where he has your butt covered. I already said it, but oh well. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. He has your butt, the entire thing, covered.